Hi, this is Dylan with Western Wild, and today we're going to talk to you about the gear that we never leave home without when we go off-roading in the snow. Item number one on our list is extra warm clothing. And when you're going off-roading in the snow, you can't just think about being nice and cozy in the heated cab. Uh, if there's going to be a recovery, you're going to have to get out, you're going to have to be in the cold, and then there's always a chance that you're going to get stuck for an extended period of time as well. And you need to think about the clothing that you need to stay warm while you're stuck. Next up on our list is extra food, water, and fuel. Uh, you always have to think about when you're out in the snow, you're going to get hungrier. Uh, sometimes you can get dehydrated without knowing it. Uh, and with your vehicle, you're going to use more gas when you're out off-roading like this. And you always wanna have that extra supply of gas uh, in case you get stuck and need to run the heater at night. Number three on our list are vehicle recovery points. Now, when you do get stuck, the easiest way to get out is to either have someone pull you out with a strap or pull you out with a winch. Uh, and the best way to do that is to have rated recovery points on your vehicle that can support the full weight of the vehicle. Now, the thing with the recovery points is that not all of them are made equal. Uh, a lot of newer cars don't necessarily have them at all. Uh, and in some cases, you will find uh, what we call lashing points uh, that were used to tie down your car on a ship when it was being transported, but they're not actually capable of supporting your vehicle for a recovery. So before you go out, make sure that you know that your recovery points are rated to be pulled out. Number four on our list is a means to air down your tires. Now this part is critical for gaining traction and flotation in the snow. Uh, typically your tires are gonna run somewhere from 30 to 40 PSI on the road. In the snow, dropping them down somewhere between 10 and 20 PSI is going to help your vehicle stay on top of the snow. Uh, and it's gonna give you a larger traction patch so that your vehicle can grip into the snow as well. Uh, absolutely critical piece of off-road kit right here. Now, there are a lot of different options out there available for airing down your tires. Uh, some of them are more of a just, there's one PSI setting, you screw it onto your tire, you can even drive with it, leave it, forget it while they air down, and then take them back off later. Uh, we like the ARB deflator system. It takes a little bit longer, there's a little more work involved, but the nice thing about this is that you get to pick what tire pressure you're at every time. Uh, and that's great because certain conditions you may only want to drop down to like 25 PSI. Uh, and then when it gets really deep in the snow or sand, uh, it's better to drop down to 10. And this allows us to pick our PSI every time. When it comes to tire pressure, what goes down must come back up before you get back on the highway at the end of the day. That's why number five on our list is a portable air compressor. Uh, these can plug into your vehicle car battery. Uh, and then you can pop back up to highway pressure before you get back on the road at the end of the day. Now there are a couple important considerations with an air compressor. The biggest one is that you have to match the size of your air compressor to the size of your tires. Some air compressors aren't even capable of uh, airing up larger tires over 33 inches. Uh, and so you need to know, um, do your research online with a particular model and make sure that you have the power and the duty cycle in your compressor to air up your particular tires. Number six on our list is your best friend when going off-road in any low traction conditions. Uh, a shovel can get you out of some really bad stuck situations. Um, helps you to clear the snow out from under your vehicle. Uh, it can make a ramp. Um, it's just utterly indispensable tool. Um, we will often carry two when we go off-road uh, that's because Tessa doesn't like to uh, sit around and watch, and that way we can both go to work and get out faster. You know, you don't really need to go with a very specialized off-road shovel for this. Uh, any Home Depot shovel will do. Um, we like a full length one. Uh, the pointed style head is nice if you're having to deal with any rocks or really tough soil or ice. Uh, for snowy conditions like this, it's also nice to have a second shovel on hand with more of a square head uh, because that can move the snow out of the way a lot faster. Number seven on our list are traction boards. These are a very handy tool for getting you out of mildly stuck situations. Uh, and when paired with other recovery methods, they can make it a lot easier to get you out of very stuck situations. We used to run with the uh, Maxa Escaper Buddy kind of off-brand traction mat. 
Uh, they did great for a long time. Um, they have their pros, they have their cons. Uh, one thing that I will say with these is that it is always nice to run with four of them rather than two. And that's why we eventually picked up a set of Max Tracks, which are really the original model in the space. Uh, and we always have those on the side of the truck. So even if we're just driving through the woods, need to help someone else get unstuck or find ourselves in a, a mildly stuck situation, they're available. When we know that we're going into deeper snow like this, we always throw our older Max Attraction boards into the truck bed as well. Um, just makes a huge difference to have four of them versus two. Number eight on our list is a recovery strap. Now, when you get stuck deep in the snow when you're wheeling with a friend or if someone else comes around, uh, this is usually going to be the most surefire way to get you out. Just attach it to one vehicle at the recovery points that we talked about previously, attach it to the other and pull gets you out nine times out of 10. These come in two different variants. Uh, this one right here is a toe strap. Um, this is designed to use for static recoveries only. And what that means is when you attach this on uh, to both vehicles, you need to tighten the strap first before the recovering vehicle starts the pull. The other variety that is becoming more and more popular and is arguably better for snowy situations like this is a dynamic or kinetic recovery rope or strap. Now, kinetic recovery rope is different from a toe strap in that it's designed for the recovering vehicle to actually get a running start when it pulls you out. The rope stretches, uh, which spreads out the force of the recovery and allows it to multiply the pulling force in the process. Uh, it's generally a better option for snowy conditions like this when you're really, really stuck. Uh, the one thing that I'd say about it is that it's not really preferable um, if you're towing another vehicle for a long period of time. Number nine on our list is a saw of some kind. Now, when you're out in stormy, snowy weather like this, it's very common for trees to fall over from windfall or snow accumulation. Uh, and sometimes that can be a real hazard if you actively need to get through on that road to get home. Uh, we carry a chainsaw with us. Um, just because we like to be able to take out bigger trees and have the ease there. It's also great when we're camping for just collecting firewood. Uh, you can go with either electric or gas these days. Both are great options. Um, but at a minimum, you know, even having a nice handsaw is a great extra thing to have in your kit um, just in case a tree falls in the road and you need to get out. Number 10 on our list is a winch. Now, we snow wheeled for probably four or five years before we got this. I don't think it's necessarily an item that you absolutely have to have to go snow wheeling, uh, but what it does is it really changes what your risk tolerance can be uh, for how deep into the snow you go uh, and whether or not you can go snow wheeling without a buddy. Now there are a lot of things to consider when you're shopping for a winch. Uh, the biggest one is going to be your load capacity. Uh, so usually what you want to do is figure out what the heaviest your vehicle is going to be and then multiply that by 1.5 to find out what minimum size winch you're going to get. Uh, this truck is around 7,000 pounds fully loaded uh, and that math dictated that we went with a 12,000 pound winch. Um, some people will swear that you can only buy worn top of the line. Uh, a lot of others are saying that some of the cheaper Harbor Freight style winches are a great option these days, uh, which is nice if you're not going to use it a lot, but you want to be able to have that option just in case. Uh, the other consideration is going to be synthetic versus steel winch cable. Um, steel is tried and true. There are some benefits to it. Uh, we ultimately went with synthetic uh, because it's a lighter weight cable. Uh, and there's a little bit of an extra safety factor if this cable snaps versus a steel cable. That concludes our top 10 list for gear that we always bring with us when snow wheeling. Uh, if there's anything else that you bring when off-roading in the snow that you'd like to tell us about, uh, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear it. Uh, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and stay wild.